If you're still struggling to be a consistently profitable trader and consistently find yourself on the wrong side of the market, then this video is for you. We're about to walk through an entire market structure masterclass in eight simple steps. Step one, we're gonna be looking at basic market structure. Step two, we're gonna be looking at what is a change of character. Step three is gonna be the three phases of a true market shift. Step four is the reality of market structure and heading into the more advanced concepts right there. Step five is our pullback rule. Step six is actually mapping out market structure. Step seven is going to be multi-dimensional market structure. And then eight, I'm going to take everything that you've just learned from basic to advanced and put it into my actual trading strategy. So with that being said, this is going to be an epic, epic video, no matter whether you are a complete beginner or you are very, very familiar with my concepts and you're on the verge of profitability. There's going to be value in this for both of you guys. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into things. So step one, basic market structure, very, very basic level stuff. I know we will work our way up to the more advanced concepts as we go. But for anyone who is a beginner here, this is important for you to know. So on the left hand side, we have what we call bearish market structure. What we simply see is that we have a high, a swing level up here. And what we're looking for, and also the purpose of market structure is to be able to identify our directional bias. What do I mean by directional bias? Our directional bias is simply the bias that we have on where the market is likely to go to. For example, is the market going to trade higher or is the market going to trade lower? If you want to be a profitable trader, the fundamental most important thing that you're going to need is going to be understanding where the market is likely to trade to next in terms of your direction. And then everything else is just confluences and add-ons to that bias to additionally confirm that bias and get involved in that market move. So with that being said, this is how we do that. You are either always obviously bearish, trading lower, or bullish, trading higher. Our job to identify market structure is to map out our swing points in market structure. Swing points can be identified as the external swings of the price leg before price reverses or continues. So if we take that very definition and we apply it to this bearish model right here, what do you think that we're going to see? Well, let's first and foremost map out the swings. So the first swing is going to be up here. The second swing down here. The third swing up here. The fourth swing down here. The fifth swing and the sixth swing. You can see that those are very clearly the swing points that caused price to either reverse or continue. And so when you've mapped out your swing points, you have essentially established your trend. And you guys probably heard the trend saying before, but it's literally couldn't be any closer to the truth. The trend is your friend. You always want to be trading in alignment with the trend, right? So again, very basic stuff, but we are going to go so much deeper into market structure because this is very basic level stuff. So you can see in here, we have swing high that puts in a lower low. Swing low puts in a lower high. So what's a lower high? Well, the point is, is that this high right here, as price begins to reverse, is lower than the previous high. That in of itself is indicative of lower prices. Okay, so now we have our swing low followed by a lower low. Simply put, this low here is lower than the previous low. Therefore, we are trading lower. We have two indicatives of lower prices. We have a lower high and a lower low. Price is obviously trading lower. So with that being said, what do we expect to happen next? Well, after we've just put in a new lower low, so we've broken structure, we're very extended in this price leg, we are going to expect a pullback. That pullback is going to be bullish in the moment, getting ready to put in a lower high, right? So it's coming back up to test this previous high and then continue trading lower to put in a lower low. So before we even can see anything that's in here, we already have the bias, the idea that price had just put in a lower low. We've had a break of structure. 
Therefore, price is likely to, with the correct confirmation, which I'll show you later in the video, we are likely now going to reverse and trade higher before getting to some area of interest, give the correct confirmations to confirm that price is about to reverse, which again, we'll cover later, before then going and trading lower into a lower low. So we already have the idea, we already have our directional bias is short-term pullback, long-term continuation before it's even happened. That is the whole point of market structure, is to give you an edge over what's going to happen from a directional standpoint. Let's go look, let's go ahead and look at the second variation, which is obviously bullish. It's the exact same thing. We have a low down here and we have a high up here. Price pulls back, respects our swing low down here, and then goes and puts in a new high. Well, this high that it's just put in is higher than the previous high, and the low is higher than the previous low. Therefore, we are obviously creating higher prices. Therefore, before we can even see any of this, what do we expect to happen? We've just broken structure. We've taken out the swing high. Now, we would expect that price would give us the confirmation, and only when it gives the confirmation do we expect it, that now price is going to pull back, give us a higher low, and then give us confirmation in here to go and put in a higher high. So we already know the next two phases of price with the correct confirmations are coming. And it's our job then to get involved in this move and get involved in this move. And you can see now without directional bias, you don't have any thesis for why you should take a trade. And so market structure is all the reasons as to why you should take a trade. With that being said, let's go ahead into step number two. So step number two and still in the basic level, we can see that we have on the left hand side, we have a bullish understanding of change of character. Simply put, change of character is just the change in trend. We are shifting from going lower and lower to higher. So we have our swing low down here, price pulls back, we have our swing high, we go lower low, we go lower high, we go lower low. Great, price is bearish. We are expecting price to go and put in a lower high and a lower low. Okay. What happens if that fails? If that fails, we will know because this high will get broken. This high should never get broken. If this high gets broken, that is a change of character. And the moment that that high gets broken, you shift your bias at looking at shorting the market because you're expecting price to go down to longing the market because you are expecting the price now to likely continue trading higher. That is the change of character going from one direction, in this case, bearish, to the other direction, bullish. And so if we take a look at the exact same example on the right hand side, but a bearish change of character model, we see the exact same thing. Swing high puts in this swing low, puts in a higher high. Great, already confirmed we are bullish. Now we can look at longin. We'll get a confirmation in here that tells us that price is now coming to put in a higher low. Price comes in. This is our low, can't disrespect this low. And then price does what? Gives us our confirmation in here. Now we know that price is going to go higher. Now we can target this high up in here. We have a break of structure. And then once price gives us our confirmation, what do we expect? Price to put in a higher high. Time for price to put in a higher low. Price comes into this level and trades straight through it. That is our change of character. We have shifted from a bullish bias expecting to long the market in here to what? a bearish bias. Now we've had the shift of this low, the pullback and continuation. And that is the change of character. Now the good news is, and this is why we use confirmation, is a lot of the time there is no confirmation in here that would indicate that price is getting ready to trade higher again. And that's why we use that. And that's what you're going to learn later in the video. You can avoid getting stuck in this idea that price should trade higher if it doesn't give you the confirmation, which is the signs that it's going to. And when it doesn't, and it just continues trading lower, there's no worries. You, nothing happened to you. You didn't lose a trade, you didn't take a trade, right? So that is step number two, understanding change of character. And simply to put it, change of character is shifting from one trend to another. It's the point in price where price reverses. It's always going to happen. Now let's walk into step number three. So step number three is going to be identifying a true market reversal. You see, not all the time that we get a change of character 
does that change of character then hold true? Sometimes you get a fake out, right? So we have a high up in here, price trades lower, we have a low, great, that's our current price leg. We can use this price leg to understand the direction if price either breaks the high or breaks the low. If it breaks the high, it's going to be bullish. If it breaks the low, it's going to be bearish, right? It's that simple. With that being said, price comes up, we break the low. So now we've had a break of structure. Now we know that we are bearish. Therefore, our bias is to trade lower high before lower low. Great. And then once price gives another break of structure in a bearish market, what are we expect it? We're expecting lower high and lower low. But in this instance, price gives a change of character. And so now you're expecting that it's potentially time to go long, but not until you have your next confirmation. And what happens to a lot of traders is they'll take this lower low shift. They'll look at immediately going long and they'll get stopped out and they'll wonder why. And that's because a lot of the time it can be that if you don't have the correct rules in place or if you get confused or sometimes the market just doesn't respect your levels, that's fine. That's normal. That's part of having an edge. So price up in here takes this high and we considered this as our swing, this as our swing and this as our swing. And when we see this happen, when we go lower, low, shift, shift, what that tells us is that we were wrong, right? It tells us that this wasn't the low, this wasn't the high, this wasn't the low. And actually, the market had the idea of this being its high and this being its low. And actually, price did continue. We just misread the situation. That's what it means a lot of the time that you will see it. So, how can you combat that, especially if you are, you know, a relatively new trader or you're struggling with profitability and you don't want to chase every change of character, you can wait for additional confirmation, right? And that is a true trend change. So we can see here that price has a high up in here, a low up in here. That is our price range. We need to set that out and use that as our understanding of where price may want to go to next. So if we map this out in here, and we'll make it a little gray box and we'll pull this box across as long as we need to go, right? That is what we're going to call our trading range. Now, this is our high, this is our low. If price breaks the high, if it breaks out of our trading range upwards, then price is confirmed bullish. If it breaks out of our box downwards, it is confirmed bearish, right? It is that simple. So when we get the break out of our trading range into lower, we have a break of structure, we are now bearish. Great. We can look at this point as our high, the, the, the recent low as our low, and now we have a new trading range, right? This is our trading range. And again, we're waiting to see a breakout of continue lower or continue higher. And so what you can see is that's our trading range, and we end up breaking out of our trading range downwards. Again, expected as usual, because we are bearish. We have high low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, and then we get a higher high. And this higher high in here is indicative of potential trend reversal. We may have just gone from bearish, and because we have been bearish for so long, price has got so low, it's time to go to bullish, right? That just happens over and over again. You will shift from bearish to bullish, dependent upon um, many different factors. And again, a lot of those things we'll get into as we get into the more advanced concepts of market structure. This is still very basic. This change of character in here indicates higher prices. And it isn't confirmed until you have one more pullback, higher low, higher high, break of structure. That there is confirmed that you have now shifted from bearish to bullish. And again, like I said, if you are relatively newer or you're struggling to get funded, maybe stop just chasing the change of character and wait for the additional confirmation. It just requires more patience, but it has a higher success rate of being predictive to go higher in the next leg. So that is how to understand true trend change. Let's now go ahead and look at step four. So here we are, step number four. This is actually likely what the market is going to look like. It's not going to be as simple and easy as I've just explained it like this, right? Unfortunately, that just isn't the way that things worked. If it were, then everybody would be profitable. 
So the market usually looks something like this. Now you can understand how this can be confusing. And it's our job to simplify this and to give you frameworks where you can actually understand it. So we're starting to creep into the more advanced concepts in here. And I'll try to, you know, make it as understandable as possible. So what you have in here is so many different swing points, right? We have swing, swing. Every time price reverses, we know that that is a swing point, right? Every time that price reverses, we know that's a swing point. But the thing is, is there are so many different swing points inside of one leg. It's so easy if you only follow the swing points and what happens next to get caught in this idea and get caught on the wrong side of the market. Because look how many times price has lower swing point and higher swing point and lower swing point and higher swing point. You guys would be chasing the market all day and you would just be wrong time and time again. So what is the framework? Well, it's actually very, very simple. There are two types of swings. There is your external swing and there is your internal swing, right? These are very, very important concepts. And so if we look at things again and we just start off with a very simple, we know that this is our swing low and we know that this is our swing high. And if we just take a bot and take that box, put it from the swing low up to the swing high, we know that until price breaks out either higher or lower than this box, that nothing significant has really taken place. That is what we refer to as our trading range. We have swing, we have swing low down here, swing high up here. We don't know yet whether we're bullish or bearish. Let's just say that, right? We don't know. We need confirmation. So what happens? Well, price comes in this low down here, inside of our swing range for price to be confirmed bearish or bullish it needs to break out of these external swings and what i see it happen to a lot of traders is they'll get confused and lost inside of these internal swings because what will happen is you'll have your swing low you'll have your swing high then you'll come in here and traders will start looking at these things as though these things matter and what they will see is that price has just put in a lower low they'll think that price is actually going to be bearish because we've had this little run in here. When in reality, you're focused on the wrong things. We need to be focused on the external swing points. These are the things that really move the market. So if we look at this now, what we see is that we actually have a break to the upside. So if we map that out as a break of structure, right? A break of structure to the upside, followed by this being our swing high. So this is our break of structure. Now, how do we identify what is our swing low? How do we know now what is our swing low? And it's simple. You can identify the swing low as the furthest point that price pulled back before it broke out the range. So it breaks out the range in here, right? So let's draw that across here. Now, if we look inside this box, inside of our price leg, inside of our trading range, where is the lowest point? point that price pulled back is it here well no because after this price continued trading lower is it here well yes because this is the lowest point before price broke out of that range so it's very simple now we can go this is our swing low confirmed this is our swing high confirmed right so now if we just move this box a minute well now what do let's move this box over the side now what do we have we have bullish price action. So we are expecting now that price is going to trade higher. But because it's just broke structure, it's going to trade lower a little bit first before then it trades higher, right? That is what we've concluded from the first few steps. So we know then that this down here is our swing low and we know that this is our swing high. So let's get our box for a second a minute. We are expecting price to trade higher overall so we're expecting price to break out the top side of the box, right? And what do we have? Well, as expected, price does break out to the top side of the box, gives a break of structure, continues bullish. Now, we've completely kind of ignored these two little price points in here. And that is because they are obviously internal areas of price. They don't dictate the trend. They are expected to be bearish internal why? Because it's time for a pullback. After price breaks out of this high in here, you would expect that in the short term, 
price will be a little bit bearish meaning just coming down because it's coming back into these areas so it can trade higher again right that is how it operates and again when we get further into the video i will go into the deeper details of how we understand that so with that being said we've come from a swing low to a swing high we've pulled back we've gone higher high we've pulled back we've gone higher high again right okay cool so again, where is the lowest point before price broke out? This is our new swing low. So this is the low that needs to stay protected in order for the bullish trend to continue. Okay, let's take away this box. So there's our swing low. There is our swing high. Again, let's do our box method. Let's take this box to this box. And bearing in mind, we've just broken structure, right? So we've just broken structure. So break of structure after after all breaks of structure at some point that is the pullback phase and that's what happens price break structure and it begins to pull back so let's draw this box across until it gets broken out of okay we've done that now we have low swing high we're expecting that even before anything past this line happens we're expecting price to pull back a little bit and then continue it's that simple it genuinely is that simple so what do we see there's our swing low, there's our swing high, price pulls back a little bit and then continues. It breaks out of the previous trading range. It breaks to the upside because that was our directional bias because we are in a bullish trend. We would be expecting price to trade higher, right? Great. So where is our swing low? Where is our new swing low? It's the lowest point before price breaks back to the upside, which is right here. And you can do this if it confuses you. You can just use the boxes. If you're starting out and you're just understanding market structure, use the boxes. It will help you a lot in separating the price ranges because you can see how messy it was before. But now we're starting to organize it. We're starting to understand what all of these little different points in price actually mean. So again, we can come out of here. We can draw you across because now it doesn't matter. And what do we have? We have our swing low and we have our swing high, the highest point before price begins to reverse. So what can we do? Once again, we can draw the box from the low up to the high, draw it across until we break out. And again, what do we see? We're expecting the same thing. We have the same directional bias. We are expecting that price will have a pullback, give us confirmation, and then continue trading higher. And that's exactly what price does. Price breaks structure to the upside again because we are bullish, right? We've had one, two, three. And then from here, you again can look at where is my swing low? The lowest point before price puts in the high. There's my swing low. Great. Where is my swing high? The highest point before price begins to reverse. Great. So now I have a swing high and I have a swing low. What am I expecting next? I'm expecting that price respects this low because we're still bullish and goes and trades higher once again. And in this scenario, which again will happen, is we get a change of character. And it's an important lesson here, an important thing to note. The higher that you get in price, so the more legs of price that you've had in one direction consecutively, each new leg, there is a heightened probability that price will begin to change character. So each new leg of price, let's say for example, price is moving higher, Every time price puts in a new high, the chances increase that the next leg may be a change of character because that is just the operation of the market. Price will always gravitate high and then low and then high and then low. That is literally the process of balancing the orders. And so with that being said, we have our break of structure to the upside. And what do we have? We have a change of character. This change of character is seen because we have our swing low that's responsible for the swing high gets broken through, right? That right there is our change of character. And so from here, we now are likely expecting lower prices. We're likely expecting lower prices. So change of character, this is our swing low. This is our swing high. So now what are we expecting? Well, the highest probability is that price will respect this high and continue trading lower. So what we can do, again, we can just take our box. We can go from the low up to the high and draw it across until price gets broken out of. Great, price shift to the downside. We already expected that price would likely go lower, but it wasn't confirmed that it's going to continue going after that without this break of structure. So now we've had our break of structure. We've had change of character. 
pullback, break of structure. Now it is confirmed that price is going to continue trading lower, right? That is our break of structure. Great. So now we need to identify where is the pullback? Where is the swing high now? The swing high is the highest point that price pulled back before we put in the new low. There is our swing high. Very, very simple. Where is our swing low? Our swing low is here because this is where price begins the reversal process to put in a lower high. So we have our swing low and we have our swing high. And now it's expected that price is going to respect this high up in here before trading lower and taking out this low. And that's exactly what happens. You can see that price begins to pull back and then trades lower again. And again, a lot of traders get caught in this here. They see this and they think it's time to go long. But the reality is, is the external structure is the one that always leads the way. And that's what we use. We use our swing points. And this is the exact system and exact rules that we use to identify where the market is heading to next. So based off of that, then we have our breaker structure right here, right now. Based off of that, then you tell me, what are we expecting next? We are expecting if this right here is our new swing high, because it's the highest point from where price broke low. We're expecting, we don't know, price could pull back right now or price could continue going a little bit lower before then it pulls back. And again, we have a confirmation system for this. So eventually price will pull back. And before it's even done that, when we have our confirmation, we already know that price is going to do that. And then what does it do? It's going to, at some point, give us the confirmation that price is ready to trade lower. And before price is even taken out this low in here, with our confirmation, we are able to trade into this low. That is what our whole edge is based off of, really, is this directional bias. Before this low was even taken out, we already knew what was going to happen next, or at least with a high probable certainty, what was going to happen next. And that is exactly what we're doing. And so we've taken this from looking very complicated in the beginning to actually very simple, right? Because now we could go back through, if we just remove all of the drawings, we could literally go back through here and do the exact same thing that we did with the basic market structure, but we could just actually understand what that's going to look like in real time in the actual market itself when we actually get into the market itself and we are getting to that point so if we look at this now and we just map out our swings what do we see it becomes very basic we have a swing low we have a swing light pr price break structure new high price pulls back as long as it respects this low this is the lowest point that price pulls back before it breaks the high we break structure this is the high that begins to reverse we pull back. This is the lowest point before price break structure. This is the highest point. Price pulls back. This is the lowest point before price break structure. Price break structure again. This is our highest point. Price changes character. This is our lowest point. Price pulls back. And without even thinking about it, we can easily anticipate what are our swing points. We easily understand that we are going from low, high, 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 low. And we've gone from it looking very complicated to actually just as simple as we once seen it when we were looking at it from a basic lens, because that's it. The thing is, there's just loads of these little price moves inside that can throw you off. But as long as you have the correct framework, you're very able to just understand the actual direction of price. And that is super, super important to do. So that was the first touch into the um, advanced types of things. Now, what I'm going to walk you through next is, again, this is our golden rule, right? So here we are, and this is our golden rule. Now what we're looking at is actual candlesticks. This is what the charts are actually going to look like. And again, we're going to get into that in the next step. At the next step, we're going to actually walk through the charts and look at everything we've just learned and apply it all. So with this being said, our golden rule. What is our golden rule? So to consider a valid pullback, price must have three candles that break the prior candle in the opposing direction to the current trend, right? And for example, if we are bullish, then price needs to have three bearish candles that break each other in the opposite direction to be considered a pullback. 
Because if we go back to where we just were for a second, the question that a lot of you guys may have is, well, how do we actually understand that, you know, um, price has confirmed pullback? And that is exactly what we're answering in this golden rule. So let's map this out. Now, from first glance, what you may look at and you may think, you may think that this is our low, this is our high, this is our low, this is our high, this is our low, this is our high, this is our low, high, change of character, and then continue higher, right? That's what, if, if I just gave you those rules that we just spoke about and said map out the swing points, you would say that is our, that is our market structure, right? And that's fine because a lot of it is correct. However, there is one in here that is completely wrong. And this is, again, a huge mistake that I see traders make. And this causes them to end up on the wrong side of the market. They're trying to short the market when in reality, price is actually still bullish. And that golden rule is the three candles. So let's take a look at what those three candles are and how they relate to a pullback. So what you can see here is we have our swing low. No doubt about it that that right there is our swing low. Great, swing low. Price comes up and we don't know repeat, we do not know that this is our swing high until we have had the three pullback, right? So if we look at this high, once this high is created, we now need to see three bearish candles before we break this high again, that break each other with a body close in order for this to be considered our swing high. So if we look at this, we can see that this is our high right here. We have a bearish candle. Okay, there's one. Now the second bearish candle, does it break and close below the previous one? Yes, it does. Okay, great. There's two. Now onto the next one. So this is our second bearish candle. Does the third bearish candle, so we have a bullish candle that wicks through it, which means nothing. We have a four, we have a third bearish candle. Now, does this candle break below this previous candle? and close. No. Okay. The next candle is another bearish candle. Does it break and close below? Yes, it does. Okay, great. The moment that it is confirmed that there are three bearish candles, that has now confirmed that this is our swing high, right? Because uh, without that rule, you would never know when the high has been created. You would be like, is that the high? No. Is that the high? No. Is that the high? No. And price just keeps continuing and you don't know when the high is. And then if price comes back, you're thinking, well, maybe that's high, maybe that's high, maybe that's a high. And in reality, none of them were, right? And that is what we're trying to solve here, giving you an exact systematic approach to understanding what is a pullback and how to actually identify whether something is a structure point or not. That is the biggest, biggest mistake that traders have is they don't understand what is a structure point? And it's all easy in theory for me to come on here and show you market structure as simple as this. And then you go into the charts and then all of a sudden you have no idea what point is a high, what point is a low, is this a high, is this a low? And this rule here, which is a rule that I personally created myself, is a rule that really, really drastically transformed my own personal trading because I was able to objectively decide is this a high? Yes or no. Is this a low? Yes or no. Right? And that will give you so much more clarity. And to your amazement, I've tested this thoroughly and it works incredibly, incredibly well. So with that being said, the moment that it's confirmed that this is a uh, three kind of pullback, we know that this is our swing low already. We know that this is our swing high. Great. So there is our low and there is our high. So now we can use, I'll do it for the first one, our box, same as before. And then what happens? We break out of our box. So that right there is what? A break of structure. So now it is confirmed that we are bullish, right? Okay, great. We are now bullish. Where is our new swing low? Our new swing low is here because it's the lowest point after price has confirmed that it's broke to the upside. Okay, great. So now we have a swing low. So in theory, what we're expecting is this low should be protected, right? So what happens? Price trades higher up into here and eventually we get here, right? And now we need to understand whether or not price is is going to begin pulling back. 
And so we do that by understanding, do we have three candles that have pulled back? Let's take a look. So we have bearish candle number one. Okay, great. That's our starting point. The second bearish candle closes below. Okay, great. So there's one, there's two. We need one more candle to close below. The next one is a bullish candle. It doesn't do anything, so it doesn't matter. The next one is a bearish candle that goes below but doesn't close. It's only a wick, therefore it does not count. So if price had to continue trading higher again from here, this would not be a pullback. It would still be this low to wherever it's going to pull back from. So from there, our next candle, fortunately, is a bearish candle that breaks below. Therefore, we have one candle break, two candles break, three candles. Three candles that break each other to the downside. So then it is confirmed that this is our swing high. Great. So that is our swing high up in there. And then obviously once that price is broken, which is expected to happen, right? Once that price is broken, it's then confirmed that the lowest point after this was happened, so the lowest point price pulled back from before breaking it, is our swing point. So now we map this level out and this is our protected low right? Price should not break below this level. Great. So we break structure. Now we are expecting at some point price is going to pull back. We don't know when until we've had the confirmation. So we need to see three bearish candles that break and close below each other inside the price leg for it to be considered a new structure range, right? In this example, what do we have? We have bullish candle. We have bearish candle. Okay, great. There's one. And then the next bearish candle is a break and close. Okay, great. But we would need to see one more candle close and break break and close below this low for this, for this to be considered a swing high. Because that doesn't happen and then price continues and breaks this high, this high has no relevance. This is not our swing high. This is not our swing low because this wasn't a three candle pullback. So what happens is, this just becomes included inside of the price range that we already have. So this is still our swing low. And then price comes up in here and goes, okay, bullish candle, bearish one, two and close, three and close. Okay, great, guaranteed pullback. So now we have this as our swing high. And so that, this little pullback becomes warped inside of this price leg. We go from low to high, right? And then we have our three candle pullback and price should respect this low, and it does, and then continue trading higher. But the, the big mistake that people make is they don't know this rule, and they consider this as their little pullback, and then they think that it's bullish, and they want to buy from here, and then they get stopped out, and then, okay, now that they've been stopped out, right, now that they've been actually, uh, they've taken a loss on their long position, if they've taken a long based on the bullish structure, now they're looking to short. And so now they're going to be looking to short from somewhere in here and they're going to have their stop losses where on these highs. And what's going to happen? They're going to get stopped out again. All because they didn't have a exact mechanical rule in place that actually worked for market structure. Because they assumed that this right here was a pullback. And that is a huge mistake that I see traders make all the time. When in reality, for me and our rule that we have, this is our swing low, price break structure, no pullback, price just continues. This is just one price leg, right? And then it tops out here and then it reverses because you have your free candles. And then in, a in actuality, I'm using this low in here as liquidity. I'm using other people's stop losses in here as liquidity because I know that price will want to go to this level to liquidate those positions before going to where it really wants to go. Old lows are prime liquidity. Therefore, I'm able to get in at these lows my stops can go below my protected area and I can look at targeting where price is going anyway, which is higher because we are bullish still. Break of structure. And that is the difference. And that is the golden rule of understanding what makes a pullback and what doesn't make a pullback. So with that being said, we are about to go into number six, which is actually mapping out our market structure in the actual charts. So let's go to euro dollar live charts. Okay, so here we are, euro dollar. Uh, the, today's day is uh, Friday the 29th of March. So we have this as our entire week that has just played out. So it's completely fresh price action. You, nobody can say 
you're cherry picking it, you're just picking the examples that this works. I'm just going to show you the most recent piece of price action. Euro dollar forex.com 15 minute time frame, which is the main time frame that we use. It's our medium time frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of the rules that we've just learned and we're going to apply them to market structure. We're going to apply them to the market so you can begin to understand how these things look in practicality. Because again, it can be confusing and throw you off when you get to the charts. It all sounds good in theory. A lot of people will show you theory. No one wants to show anything when it comes to the charts because it's a lot, uh, it's a different ball game. So first of all, we are too zoomed out, right? So let's make sure that we actually zoom in on the relevant price action. And what we're going to do is we're going to start from the previous bearish leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, imagine this is the only price action that you've got. Great. So we can see that we're bearish, right? We've just put in this low. So this is our swing low down here. And do we have a three candle pullback? We have one candle bullish, two candle bullish, three candles. Okay, we have at least three candles that succeed themselves. Great, so that is our swing high, that is our pullback. So what happens then? Price breaks structure. Break of structure to the downside. Okay, great. It is now confirmed that we are bearish. Price is expected to go lower, right? Very clearly so. Okay, great. So from here, we can see that we have swing high, swing low, now we need to find where is our next lower low. So price comes to here and does it have three candles as a pullback? Let's zoom in and take a look at a second. Is there three candles that pull back inside of this price leg? Let's take a look. So we break structure, we come down. This is our lowest point. Price goes one candle, two candles and three candles. Okay, great. So that then becomes our swing low. So it's confirmed now that this is actually our swing low. Now, if price would have came up and then broke below this low with a body close, then great, we would have been able to use that. But it doesn't. It comes in, wicks it, which means nothing other than a liquidation. So this is our swing low because it puts in the three kind of pullback. Then when does price break and close this level? When does price break structure? Price break structure here as expected. And what we can then do is we can look at where was the highest point before price broke. The highest point is here. So this then becomes our most recent, right? This then becomes our most recent high. So we can keep that on here and we can see that we broke structure. So we are bearish. Okay, great. Now we need to find the next low, the next level of price, right? So what do we have? We have potential here. So is this the low? No, because we don't have three candles. Okay, on to the next one. Is this the low? One bullish, two bullish, three bullish that break. Great. So this then becomes our swing low because it created three candles to pull back from. So that is the low that we're looking at targeting. Now, what you will, will notice in this example is price is extremely bearish and there are actually no, ex there are no scenarios where we can actually get into any trades. At the end of this video, I'm going to be sh breaking down this full piece of price action and the potential trade opportunities that were in there. Uh, I've still got a couple more lessons that I want to share. So hang on in there and we'll we'll get around to making everything make sense. So there are no trade opportunities because price doesn't pull back enough, right? So we have a low, we have a lower high, lower low, lower high, and then price comes and breaks structure. So we're continuing our bearish structure, right? We're continuing our bearish trend. Price breaks structure. And then do we have, is this a low? two candles. No, it's not. Okay. Is this a low? One candle? No. Is this a low? Okay. Bullish one, two, and three. So we have at least three candles. And a lot of times you'll be able to evidently see a three candle pullback. Like you don't even need to try to count them to realize that there are three candles that break each other. But in some scenarios like this, you do need to go and zoom in and count, you know, are there three candles making sure. So we already know that this is a break of structure. Now this is a more tradable range because we have our high up in here, we have our swing low in here, and before price has even happened, right? In fact, you know what we'll do? Before price has even happened, right? You don't, you can't see anything right of this. We've broken structure. Once you've seen that the three candles have occurred, right? Now we're expecting that price should, what? Respect this high and take out this low. That is our directional bias. And so even before that's printed, that is our bias. 
And so what happens? We respect the high, we don't break it, and then we go and take the low. It's that simple. And so from there, we're looking for our new pullback. Well, we can see already without even needing to zoom in that this is our most recent low because this is the low that puts in the three candle pullback. Where is our swing high? Well, this is the high because this is the highest point before price broke structure. Great. So that is our swing high. So what are we expecting? Now, we're expecting that price will continue trading lower, right? We are. That is the expectation of order flow. However, in this scenario, you can see that price actually breaks to the upside. And we have what? A change of character. We've gone from swing low being targeted to this low taking out this high. Now, again, what did I tell you before? The lower that you get into a price leg, the more breaks of structure you've had in one direction, the higher the probability becomes that price will shift the uh, market structure. It will shift. It will change character. So we had, again, map this out, a break of structure, a pullback, a break of structure, and then price begins its pullback. We're expecting price to go lower. Price comes up. It has a reaction. It trades a little bit lower. Buyers take control of the market, push price higher, give us a change of character. So we are no longer interested in looking at short in the market. If anything, we are interested in longing the market. So there's our change of character. Now what we need to find is our swing high because we know that this right here is our swing low. Where is our swing high? So the let's go and try and find it. So price comes up. This is the high the price puts in. One candle, two candles. That that does not count, right? A lot of people I would see would try and do that. That doesn't count. That doesn't meet our rule. So we move on to the next one. Okay, great. Does this have it? Wait, this has one, two candles. No, it does not. This is all inside of the price leg. This is not structure itself. This is inside of the price leg. Again, exactly the same as what we taught here. This is our low. All of this inside of here, this is not external structure that we need to pay attention to. This is everything that's happening inside of the price range. So again, we come back up, we realize this isn't. Okay, so we go to the next high. Price goes one, two, three. You can very clearly see there are three candles at least that break. Okay, great. That is confirmed bullish. And then followed by this being our low because we obviously break structure. So break of structure. What do we have? We had a bearish trend, pullback, lower low, change of character, this is the swing high. This is the swing low. Price pulls back and breaks structure, continues bullish. Now, after this, as you can see, because it was a very large trading range, and again, sometimes you will have sometimes you will have structure like this, which is really nice and very tradable. And sometimes you will have structure like this, which is actually not tradable um, because it doesn't pull back high enough. And sometimes you'll have structure like that. And sometimes you'll have structure like this, which is really nice. And then sometimes you'll go into structure like this, which is really not nice. And that just is what it is. You can't trade every swing. You have to pick and choose your swings. And again, the, the later we go into the video, the more I will show you how we do that. So that's our break of structure. We continue, we continue bullish. And then we get a shift. We go from this being the swing high, free candle pullback, that break structure so we know that's our swing low the swing low gets broken if price was going to continue trading higher then this low would not have been broken so now we are looking at going short we want to short the market we are not interested in buying price is going to continue trading lower so price changes character so we have our swing low our swing high sorry and then we need to find our swing low so we need the low that is responsible for three candles that succeed each other starting from the first candle so let's take a look at this. And again, this is where a lot of people would get lost. They see this is the lowest point. Let's start counting the candles. We have one bullish candle. We have two bullish candles. And then from there, nothing breaks this high. Nothing breaks this high. Therefore, that is only two candles. Therefore, that does not count, right? A lot of people, what they would do is they would think, okay, well, that's a swing point. So I'm going to go low here, high here. Okay, we go new low in here. Okay, that's a swing point. Okay, swing point. Okay. Okay, we've broken out here now. So now I'm going to look at going long. And that is the exact liquidity that I want to use because it is just completely wrong, right? So in reality, what actually happens is that is not a swing point, right? The swing point in here is not here. 
the swing point here is here, right? This right here is the swing point because only there do we have the three candles, right? So again, remove all of this. There's no three candle pullback in here. This is all part of this height. This is all part of the same leg. But when we get here, we have three candles at minimum, at least three candles. And so that we can consider our low. So that becomes our trading range, right? Our trading range becomes the high up here to the low down here. And what we're expecting is that price is going to pull back somewhere, right? And this is where we partner our other confluences as other part of our strategy. But for this, we're keeping focused on market structure. Price is going to pull back somewhere and then continue trading lower. Now, obviously, again, I've said we're going to stick to market structure, so we will. But you can see there are a bunch of liquidity sat at these highs. Prices run up, liquidated these highs, give confirmation and shifted. And as expected, we have traded lower. Okay, awesome expected right break of structure down so our swing low was here this is now our swing high because we've broken structure now we need to find a three candle pullback again i don't even need to look at this i can already see that there are at least three candles that break and close above each other but let's just count them one up to the wick this one and then the next one that breaks above this one is already this one right and then we have a lot more so this we are at least not so this is our swing high right this is our swing high. We're going to point that out. And then this is our swing low. And this is our swing low because it's produced at least three candles that pull back. And this is where price became really tradable. From Wednesday onward, or well, from, yeah, Wednesday morning onward, price became really tradable because the price ranges, the swings became so nice. Look, we have a low, we have a high. We have a lower low. What are we expecting? So if you can't see anything on the right side of the market right now, what are you expecting? After you've had those three candles, you're expecting price is going to what? Pull up, put in a lower high, right? This high is lower than the previous high and then pull down. So before it's even happened, we already have the edge that we know that price is going to pull up here and pull down here, right? And using the correct lower time frame confirmation, you can actually trade those levels. And again, I'm going to show you that toward the end of the video. So with that being said, high, lower, low as expected because we're bearish. Price pulls back, we break structure, that becomes our swing high. This becomes our swing low because why it has a three candle pullback. So this is the high that's going to be respected. And this high down here is going to be the high that is targeted. And what do we see? We see that before we even get it, we know that price is pulling back, pulls into a perfect area of interest to short it from. Price then continues taking out our targeted level down here. And yeah. That pretty much gives it you. And again, let's now go into uh, Thursday. What happens? Once again, price break structure. So we know that this is our high because this is the highest point from price from price break. Now we need to find a pullback. Is this a pullback? No, it isn't. Is this? No, it's not. And is this a pullback? No, it is not. So where is the pullback? Pullback is here because one, two, three bullish candles. So we know now that this is our swing low. And it's as simple as you can literally just look at this and you can go high chance it will be respected, high chance it will be targeted. How can I now get involved and take an opportunity of shorting from these levels, targeting these levels? We've just proven it time and time again. Respected, targeted, respected, targeted, respected, targeted. And it's the same thing over and over and over again, right? And so that is where we get into here, and you can see that price is lower low swing, lower high, and then we break. Now, I want to share with you guys a little gem. I wasn't sure if I was going to share it, but it's a little gem. And it's obviously, you have to understand that, that trading has a level of discretion involved. And so principles and things that we have inside of the community and we teach and everybody understands who trades with us, understands this power of discretion. And you know, when you use things and when you avoid things. So, and I'm going to give the, the chance for you guys here today to see it. This low down here is actually broken, not with the wick. Yes, with the body, right? So what we have is this body in here closes below. Therefore, that is the uh, break of structure. Now, here's where it's interesting. Because after this low, we do have three candles that pull back, right? And then we have one very aggressive sell candle or a manipulation candle, which is a liquidation candle. And many people don't understand this price delivery. 
And so what do they think? A lot of people who look at that may think, okay, you know, that is a pullback. That's a continuation. Now I'm going to short from here, which is a silly idea. They try to short from there. They get lost. Okay, now I'm going to go long. And they try to long on probably this sort of pullback. And you can see right now it's the weekend and the price, uh, price, is, price is here. And so a lot of people that don't understand when to when to know when to use it and when not to use it based on how price has developed uh, are the ones that are going to run into trouble because there are going to be a lot of people that look at this and think, okay, that's a pullback, that's a lower low, now I'm bullish, I'm going to expect on, Saturday, on market open on Monday, we're going to continue trading higher. But I'll tell you right now, the highest probability for price, and especially when you pair all of our other confluences and you know just the way we trade in general, not just market structure, that price will likely trade into here, right? And again, you're probably watching this after this happened. Go check, see what price actually did. Maybe it did trade and continue trading higher, maybe. But the highest probability, right? Again, we can only deal with probabilities, never certainties. So we don't actually know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you now, the highest probability is that price will trade lower, period. That's the highest probability. And so we'll see if that plays out or if price has the shift in momentum. Again, we'll see. But this was completely ignored by myself and our members. And I didn't even need to tell them, most of them, to ignore this. They already knew to ignore this because it's very simple and easy to understand that this is our low, that this is our high. And again, there are times where our rule will be void, right? And you'll look at that and you can already very clearly see that why would price only pull back this amount to do this with one candle, which is a FU candle, right? A liquidation candle to then continue trade higher and then higher again. It, it wouldn't. That is called inducement. The whole purpose of this is range, manipulation, liquidation. So they want to catch all of the stop losses that are below these lows before they move price where they really want to move it, take out all of this liquidity in here and collect all of the orders that are in here before then they will initiate into the actual intention, which is likely to be lower down here into price. So that's what's likely going to happen. And that is why in this instance, and in some instances, you're able to use the power of discretion. But that's not guessing. There are other confluences, there are other factors that you have to understand before you can actually be able to understand whether something should or shouldn't be used. And again, this is a rare occasion. So I'd like to point that out. This doesn't happen all the time. But from time to time, it does happen. And you have to understand when to ignore it and why that should be. And again, that's a uh, talk for another video. So with that being said, that can now move us into stage number seven, where we can look at multi-dimensional market structure. Because let's face it, you can't win time and time again if you're only focused on one time frame. So this is the, probably one of the most advanced concepts that we're about to get into, which is multi-time frame analysis. But again, I'll make it super simple and let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so here we are, multi-time frame analysis. Looks pretty simple, right? <laughs> well, I'm just about to get into it. So what we want to do is we want to look at this black line in here, and that's going to represent our four-hour time frame. So understand that time, there is no such thing as time, and I don't mean to be a conspiracist. All I'm saying is all of these times, the only thing they do and why they look different is because they have a different perspective of the same price delivery, right? So it's the same thing. All that's happening is what has happened and what is happening and what will happen, right? Those are the three variants. What has happened is already happened and it's completely whole. What will, what is happening right now is going to happen right now and what will happen in the future will happen in the future. And they all will look different, right? They are different interpretations of the exact same thing, just seen differently. For example, you can look at the at a bearish four hour like this, right? And if we just look at it right now, this is what will happen on the 15 minute time frame. So our four hour will be very simple. It will be high, it will be low, it will be lower high, it will be lower low, lower high, and lower low. But when you go on the 15 minute time frame and you see the exact same price delivery, right? Price going to each area of price at X specific time, you will have you will have the 15 minute. And this is what the 15 minute will look like. The 15 minute will look like this. It will be a lot more internal price moves than the four hour. 
And this is exactly what you'll be looking at from the 15 minute time frame just from the four hour and so we look at this and again i want to i know it looks messy but we can make it very simple and very clean if we just understand it like this so our four hour is bearish right what happened on our 15 minute well our 15 minute high is up here our low is down here okay great so the four hours bearish let's just say that right so the 15 minute goes low uh lower high lower low so great the 15 minute and the four hour are in the same direction, right? So they're aligned right now. Great. So now what we're seeing is once again, price pulls back, higher low, uh, lower high, lower low. Great. The 15 minutes bearish, break of structure, break of structure. Now the 15 minute changes character. When this happens, when you see the 15 minute change character, uh, you can assume that it's time for the four hour to pull back. So let's just say the the four hours just broken structure, right? So on the way down, it's obviously bearish. The 15 minute is obviously bearish. And now the four hour is coming to pull back. And obviously we are viewing the exact same events happening in the exact same moment, just on different time frames. So the more you zoom in, the more um the more you zoom in, the closer you get to what's happening right now. However, the more you zoom out, the closer that you're going to get to what is going to happen right? And again, that's a very big difference. That's why we have to use all the uh, the multiple different time frames because we need to build a full on picture. And let me continue and you'll understand how this picture comes to life. So the 15 minute is bearish. The 15 minute shifts bullish. That tells us the four hour is coming for a pullback. Okay. So 15 minute bullish. Great. 15 minute bullish. 15 minute continues bullish. The moment that the 15 minute has another change of character. So the 15 minute is now bearish. What does that mean? That means that the four hour is now going to continue putting in its next lower low. And so think about that for a moment. We already understand with this confirmation right here that the four hour time frame has now shifted and it's going to go and play its exact trend again. We already know that price is going to end up here and we are here again, just understanding of directional bias. We've now confirmed because the 15 minute is related to the four hour, 15 minute bearish four hour bullish, uh, 15 minute bearish, four hour bearish. Now it's time for the 50, uh, the four hour to continue to go lower. Okay, let's keep going. 15 minute pullback, break of structure, lower low, lower high, lower low, bearish. We've just had a four hour break of structure. And then you see the 15 minute time frame shift. You see the 15 minute time frame go up here and change character. What does that mean? It means that the four hour is coming for a pullback, right? So what happens? The four hour comes, 15 minute bullish, pull back and then it shifts again the 15 minute shifts from bullish to bearish what does that mean it means there is time for the four hour time frame to continue trading lower so i i apologize if that confused you it is obviously a little bit more on the advanced side but it is actually pretty simple again we'll go through and this time we'll go through with just the just the path tool so again we're going to look at this and this is going to be our four hour right and then this which i'm going to map out in red is going to be our 15 minute the 15 minute is going to look like this right it's going to be extremely bearish with the four hour obviously and then the price is going to shift and once this price shifts in here that's obviously on the 15 minute time frame it's a change of character and so you can be bullish now on the 15 minute but you're bearish on the four hour so overall, you're expecting that price is going to go lower because the higher time frame always takes precedent. You are expecting that you are going to go lower, but right now and for the next, you know, five hours, the next day, the next three days, maybe you're going to be bullish on the 15 minute time frame whilst price is pulling back. And because we trade an intraday period, I trade just four hours each day during London. I'm trying to catch trades on the five minute or the one minute time frame. So I care a lot about what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So I use the four hour time frame to give like my weekly outlook or what price is gonna happen, what price is likely to do this week or certain levels. But the 15 minute time frame combined with the one minute time frame is where I really look at taking my intraday session trades. So with that being said, the 15 minute changes character. We pull back, we break structure, we pull back, we break structure, right? So the 15 minutes bullish, but the four hours bearish, what that means is 
that the four hour is having a pullback. It's that simple. And then what you'll see is when the 15 minute shifts bearish and the four hour is also bearish, that means that now it's time for the four hour to begin trading lower. And so when you see this happen, you can already expect that on the four hour time frame, we are coming for this low. And then lo and behold, a lot of the time you will see that the 15 minute will gradually make its way and we're able to short these price legs. And then what's going to happen? Let's say this is what price looks like. We've just put in a lower low. Obviously we're bearish. And then the 15 minute time frame does this. Now, what are you expecting? You're expecting that the four hour time frame is probably coming back up to some sort of area of supply and it's going to continue. The 15 minutes is going to continue up until this area. And then you partner that area with some sort of point of interest. And then the 15 minute shifts. Now you have what? Your four hour is bearish. You're inside of a point of interest. Your 15 minute time frame has just confirmed to you that it shifted. Now you're ready to look at shorting. Now you can look at shorting this move in here. And where can you look at targeting? We can look at taking out this low down here on the four hour. And again, this is the four hour time frame. I usually do this with a 15 and the one. And then we can look at taking something along the lines of this because we're already expecting that, right? And then what happens? The four hour break structure, the 15 minute changes character. Maybe, again, if you're a skilled trader, if you're aggressive enough and you, you know, you're already competent enough, you can trade the pullback, right? So you're able to trade the pullback from this 15 minute level. And you just make, you just need to make sure that you have key areas mapped out that may be reaction points on the four hour time frame to make sure that you don't try to trade beyond them. So if you see it like that, you'll maybe have something like this, where you're able to then trade the pullback of the H4 into a key area. And sometimes you'll see where price will go. It's about being conservative. You could have held more profits. Price comes to the next level, but you didn't know that price was going to do that. And then again, you're able to then trade what? When price has this change of character, you are then able to trade the leg back down. And so that's what multiple time frame analysis looked like. And if you were to look at this, this is a 15 minute chart in red. If you look at it on the four hour time frame, it would just look like this. Right? But on the 15 minute time frame, it looks like this. And that's because they are both interlinked. They're showing you different lenses of the same picture. So you have to use that to your advantage. You have to have a higher time frame narrative. The higher time frame gives you your bias, right? It gives you your narrative of where prices go. And you have to have a medium time frame as, as a session trader, at least, or an intraday trader, if that's what you want to do. You have to have a medium time frame that you look at taking trades um, based off of. And then you have to have a lower time frame that you use to actually get entries and sniper your entries and look for your entry confirmations in that medium time frame, but avoid in the higher time frame areas of reversal. And it, it, it's a lot of stuff that's related to that. And so obviously the four hour time frame in this instance simply just looks like this. And that's how we build that picture right? And then it's just the same thing over and over again until eventually, obviously, at some point, price will shift. But it's the same thing over and over again. You can see that nothing has actually deviated. So what I want to do now, and again, this is where things get the, the most advanced, is I want to showcase you my the strategy that I use and in, implement some of the other concepts um, that we use to essentially enable you to um, look at trading opportunities based off of just the understanding of market structure of where we've just come from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of remove um, all of this in here and we're going to go and we're going to start on the four hour time frame. So the four hour time frame, as you can see, looks like this, right? Now, again, a lot of you guys may be wondering, you know, where do you even, uh, where do you even start? Well, the reality is obviously I trade every single day. So I've been in tune with understanding where the uh, market structure is, is the past years. So I'm always on top of it. So I'll tell you that I'll just take you from the most recent price action from low to lower high to lower low. The four hour was obviously bearish, as you can see. And then eventually the four hour shifted. And again, this you can interlink the four hour to the daily time frame as well. Um, the four hour shifted the highs. Um, and then we're looking at the swing high. Where does a three candle pullback come in place? Well, the actual three candle pullback comes from here. We have one bearish candle, two bearish candles, three bearish candles, and then price break structure. 
And then again, do we have the um, do we have three bearish candles? Yes, we do. We have one, we have two, and then this third one breaks below it. So price respects the low, trades higher, pulls back the lowest point before price breaks the next high. Uh, as you can see, is here. So you can see that overall, the four hour is in fact bullish, right? Um, and again, if we just come into this next one, you can see that this is the low. This is not the swing high. This up here is a swing high. So the four hour is bullish, right? However, the daily time frame is in fact bearish. So again, I'm going to go back up to the daily so you can understand the four hour time frame. So the daily time frame, even if we just remove all of this for now, the daily time frame is bearish and the daily time frame is actually a lot easier to understand because the daily time frame is high, low, high, low. What's going to happen here? I already can incorporate all my other things. I already know that this is a key area of supply. I already know that this is internal range liquidity. So I already know these areas are wanting to be targeted. I already know that we're inside of a... Um, are we inside of the 618786 FIB, which is an extra confluence? I already know that, that it's perfectly aligned with the dollar index, which is again an extra confluence. So I already know that the daily time frame is actually going to trade down into this low down here. That's what the daily is going to do. It might take a couple of weeks, but that is where the daily is going to. So when I'm coming into the four hour and you're seeing that the four hour is actually bullish right now, and you know, we could have reacted from a four hour level, I already know the the probability that this four hour low is disrespected is extremely high and that's why we use these high time frames is because when i come back into the four hour time frame now you have a completely different picture because maybe you would have thought that because obviously this was our swing high this was our swing low this was our swing high that from this low down here price is going to respect this low price is going to respect this low and continue trading higher but because we have the higher time frame the daily time frame behind us we already know that the daily has its intention. It's already fulfilled its objective. Therefore, there is no reason for price to trade higher. Therefore, price is probably most likely going to trade lower. And that's where discretion comes in. By understanding multiple time frame analysis, you're able to not stay stuck on one time frame and just think that that one time frame is going to give you all the answers because it's most likely not. You're going to be sat there scratching your head and wondering, well, I thought we were bullish. Why do we continue trading lower? And it's because you don't have an understanding of your higher time frames. So with that being said, I want to map out this is the low, but I know that price is likely trading. My directional bias is that price trades lower in here. The week starts. The week starts here, right? So I this is where the week starts, right? I already see this. These lows in here are relatively equal lows. I know that that's a area of liquidity. I know we have a bunch of lows in here. So all of this area in here is likely to be traded into because of how much liquidity is set in the lows. Again, on top of that, this low right here is the low of the previous week. The previous week's low always has a large amount of liquidity set inside of it. So if I turn on a special indicator, you'll see the sessions, right? So when I'm coming in here, you can see that this is Friday. This is the low of the previous week. And then Friday finishes, Monday opens. Price reverses back up before continuing trading back lower. So this is a target for me. This low down here is the low that I'm targeting. These lows down here are the lows that I want to target for this week. Even though, yes, we're bullish, and I'll take the bullish continuations, but the moment that we shift bearish on the 15-minute time frame, right, which is what we've already walked through, if you guys remember, um, if you guys remember, we were, we were already... We've already been through this price action. So where was we? We had a high, we had a low, we had a higher high, and then we had a change of character. The moment this change of character occurred, that was the sign for me that the four hour is now ready to go and take out these next previous lows because that's where the daily wants to go to. And the daily and the weekly have the highest bearing of everything. If you can align everything inside of those pictures and combine them with your uh, intraday perspective that is where you're really going to have the the most the most breakthroughs so price changes character this is where i'm most um uh most likely now i want to go short 
So we're looking at things. We're looking at this high and we know that this is our swing low. So now if I want to short, let's say you, we don't have this area, right? Let's say you can't see anything past this on the right side. Let's say I want to go, um, I want to go short because we're bearish. This is my swing low. This is my swing high. I need to look at areas of interest. So the first thing that I'm doing is I understand that here's Asia high, which is a huge pocket of liquidity, right? And again, I trade the uh, this London session in here. This is my trading window. So I know that this is Asia high. I know that this is all liquidity above here, even coming into London open. Um, I know that at these lows down here, this is where price is going to target. Asia lows is the weak low. It's relatively equal lows. Great. So I'm building these areas and I'm using my other concepts to make sure that I know where to avoid. So then I want to use my understanding of order blocks or supply and demand to map out areas where price will react from. This is one of them. This is another one of them, right? So prices are either going to come to one of these zones before trading lower. That is the trade idea that I want to have. So on Wednesday, when price is confirmed going lower, I'm already, I want to target this low down here already. So when this uh, session opens, I don't personally trade the 15 minute time frame, but even just one, even if you didn't trade the one minute time frame, you could still look at short in this area in here. And you could look at target in where. Let's bring this low across. You can look at target in this low that we're expecting price to run into anyway. And you can split your risk across this and this one, right? If you if you don't want to uh, obviously just put one trade on, you're there's a possibility that both of them could. But what I personally do is I wait for confirmation. So I'll wait for price to get into these zones and then I'll drop down to the one minute time frame, which I know seems wild for a lot of you guys, but a lot of you guys who already know me and have been here um, for a while obviously know that I um, trade the one minute time frame. So what I will do is I will wait for price to come into this area, right into this point of interest in here. And I will look at a uh, look at trading the change of character. So from a structural perspective, let me walk you through the one minute structure, same rules apply, by the way. So I just want to give you that. So this is our low, this is a higher high, great change of character, we're bearish, three candles pull back, lower low, right? Okay, now we're waiting for this high gets broken. Where does it get broken? It gets broken right here. Okay, that becomes our high. Three candles, one, two, three candles pull back. This becomes our high. So when London opens and I'm waiting for a, a setup opportunity, what do you think I'm doing? I'm waiting for this low to be taken out, right? And then once that low is taken out, that is when I can begin at looking at taking my um, look at framing my trade setup. So what it, what is it that I'm looking at? Once this low has been taken out, change of character to the downside, I'll look at taking the range that caused price to trade. If I expect already that price is going to, from this lowest point here, extend to this lowest point, price is already going to pull up at least 50%. It's an extra confluence 618786. And this right here, this zone, this supply zone, right where price ranges and sells off, is where I want to look at taking my short position. Now, I'm not going to claim to have a stop loss where I just put it on here and I expect perfectly because I also understand the fact that price could very well come much higher. Price could come up to these highs in here. And so instead, I would much rather stay safe in the trade as opposed to trying to maximize my risk to reward output. And um, yeah, that would ultimately be the, the set that I would take. Now, what about targets? The first thing I want to look at targeting is um, Asia Asia lows down here because that's what I'm already expecting to be taken out. And then the second thing that I just want to look to target is the area of price in which I'm expecting that we're already heading to. Right? And obviously, lo and behold, it takes a couple of days to get there. But yeah, that is an example using market structure, using multiple time frame analysis, because again, it's no different. The 15 minute is bearish. The one minute pulling back is bullish. And then you wait for the one minute to shift bearish inside this 15 minute bearish point of interest. You wait for it. You pick your areas of where price is going to react from. And then you look at essentially continuing 
uh, to go short. So if we just drop back out to the 15 minute time frame again, do the same thing, rinse and repeat. What happens the next day? The next day, price has already broken structure to the downside. So again, now our swing high is up here. So this high is going to be respected, most likely going to be respected. And then this low in here is going to be targeted, right? Has a three kind of pullback. Now, what can you look at doing? Essentially, areas of supply and demand, if you haven't already watched them, this is obviously a re refined area of supply. This is our actual supply range. Uh, unfortunately, outside of my trading window, uh, so nothing for me in here. Price didn't even really come back to this area. Um, but then anyway, nonetheless, price pulls back into key areas uh, where you can look to short from if you get the confirmation. And then it continues trading lower and it takes out this swing low. And so then what do we have? Then we have this high in here, low in here. And we're expecting what? We're expecting a pullback. And again, could have had a very nice short opportunity from this range in here to look at doing the exact same thing. Again, I did not take this trade. This isn't, um, isn't a setup I would take because it's not my actual system. It's not the actual rules that I would trade, but it is in a completely valid and logical setup. Take the exact same thing. You could look at target in the first low if you wanted to, and you just look at taking the trade into the, um, into the swing lows down here. And then again, for me personally, this was a, a nothing day because as London opened, price literally just melted off. I'd already missed my potential for entries. I would have liked to get into this Frankfurt open liquidation, but again, didn't happen. Um, so yeah, London just continued trading off. But again, what are you expecting for the next day then? Oh, and price has already run into our, um, our lows at that point. So yeah, that pretty much kind of gives you the indication of, you know, what price is doing. And that kind of gives you an overview on how to actually take trades using market structure and more importantly, using, you know, multi-dimensional market structure. So you're building your narrative from the top down, you're using the higher time frames, the daily, the four hour to build your trade ideas. And then you're using the 15 minute time frame for your daily, uh, your day to day um, trend, right? How is price trend in today how is price trending tomorrow how is price trending this week in relation to the four hour and then you take in that 15 minute trend and you're using the one minute time frame to build out your uh, your current present moment flow of orders and you want to see the present order book shift in your direction in a key point of interest in a key structural leg with the trend and then that's exactly how you can apply it. And that's exact one of the exact strategies that I'm using day in, day out, and I've been using for the last three years at this point. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, comment down below what you want to see next. Subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in any sort of mentorship, you can click the link below. We do have obviously a private level mentorship. If you do want to know these things on a deeper level, have access to all our strategies and back testing and all of that sort of stuff, you can go and apply for that in the link in the description. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao.